Hi, welcome back to PC Builder. I'm Jason. I'm really excited about today. We are gonna take questions from viewers like you. We got a lot of really good ones for our monthly Q&A, including all about the graphics card market, uh, Intel's launching their dedicated graphics card, a lot of really good stuff in there for you, as well as some other very interesting topics coming up, AMD, Fidel Fidelity, FX, and others. Of course, that's what this channel is all about. It's about getting you the best price to performance in your PC. So if that's content you want more of, remember to like the video, that really helps out more than anything. Subscribe and click the bell icon because we'd love you to stick around as our channel grows beyond 35,000 subscribers now. So excited about that. All right, with that, let's jump into some of these questions. Let's start off with the GPU market. Oh, who knew that people would ask questions about this, right? So Valerie, uh, first question, when can I expect to buy a GPU at a reasonable price without the need to pay constant attention to stock or participate in the new egg shuffle. Yeah, right, this is a, it's a constant headache. I've done a number of videos trying to help people out with this, but no matter how many videos I do, no matter how well-trained you are, it's, it's frustrating because of bots, because of the scalpers out there. Well, initially the launch didn't have enough cards. Let's just be honest here, launch didn't have enough cards for gamers, then cryptocurrency took off. Uh, and then crypto miners were just buying everything and then you couldn't compete with the crypto miners either. And it just attracted more and more and more scalpers. And they're the ones who actually drove the price up and limited availability. And if you see right now, you can go buy a card right now without having to do all that. You just have to go to eBay and you have to buy it from a scalper, which don't really wanna do if you don't have to. So I think the way prices are coming down, if you didn't see my recent monthly GPU update, by the way, in which I, shared that prices are coming down and how I'll leave a link to that right there in the card. Prices are coming down now. And that's because the crypto market is effectively, uh, crypto mining is crashing in terms of profitability. There's more things yet coming down the pike that are not gonna be good for crypto profitability. Good for gamers, not good for crypto miners. So as I said in the video, I think that prices will begin to come down towards MSRP you know, November, December. I'm hoping by Black Friday, we actually have a Black Friday that's worth the, the name and that we can buy some real GPUs uh, at a, it, maybe even at a, at a discount at that point. I wouldn't expect that it will stabilize until then unless, and this will get into the next question, uh, which are the Intel GPUs, unless Intel makes a sudden splash in the market much earlier than we thought they would and brings a lot of supply in right now where miners aren't gonna be buying those cards. So the only people who are really gonna be buying the Intel cards coming in are gonna be gamers. And that could have a, a supply impact. So on that note, uh, Winter Speed 679 asks, Intel GPUs are coming. What are, what's my opinion of it? Um, from the available info, do I even think that they have a chance? Actually, I think, I think they're gonna be pretty good from for a first iteration remember anytime you buy a first generation product, remember ryzen 1000 the first generation ryzen let's be honest now looking back and comparing it to something like ryzen 5000 the ryzen 1000 platform was very unstable had all kinds of memory uh issues and compatibility issues the boards the b350 and the x370 boards had a lot of issues it was an immature platform it was you were an early adopter if you were buying it but you could definitely see the promise. And over time, if you bought in and you got something like a Ryzen 1700X, that system today is probably running pretty well. So they've tuned out a lot of the bugs from it. I think Intel is gonna have the same challenges in their first generation GPUs. Maybe not as many. Uh, GPUs are probably a little bit more well understood. There's a little bit less demand. You don't have to connect as many components in as you do for a CPU. That being said, everything's buggy first generation. I don't care how much QA testing you do, you, you do QA testing on this population and all of a sudden you'll release it to the whole world and the whole world's gonna find some bugs that you didn't know anything about. And that's the first thing folks like me are gonna talk about are the bugs, right? So I think what we've seen so far in terms of performance is that we should expect their flagship GPU to be on par with the Radeon RX 6700 XT or the RTX 3070 for a first go at this, that's fine. I, nobody's expecting Intel to compete at the highest end. Heck, AMD haven't, hasn't even been competing at the highest end for a long time. That's a new development. I think maybe in their next generation of cards, Intel will push that out. If I were them, I would just focus on getting the mid to low end cards like really rock solid because Intel's in a precarious position right now. 
on the one hand, there is a huge opportunity for them to wade into the market um, at a time when you just can't get anything and get a lot of early adopters bought in because you can't buy anything else. On the other hand, if they miss their window on this, if they're releasing in December, um, which would I think would be a disaster for them because by that time, I expect GPU prices to return to normal. We'll have a more normalized market. They're really gonna miss a window because when it comes to a decision between buying an AMD or NVIDIA product or the brand new Intel product, a lot of consumers are gonna say, well, why am I gonna buy into this first generation product that's gonna have some bugs that I don't even, I, it's just this unknown when I can get this rock solid thing that I know is at least gonna give me fantastic gaming performance, pretty good in the studio with AMD, very good in the studio uh, with uh, RTX type products. Why do that? So I think Intel, I expect them to come in around the 3070, but this is a real precarious position because their confidence in them has eroded in the market. All right, here's a question that's closely related to the uh, the whole GPU crisis, right? Uh, Ground Game asks, how far can one juice the best APUs with better quality RAM? It basically, how much can you juice them in terms of overclocking to get more performance out of them? And at the same time, Game Tech asks, you know, Fidelity FSR, it's coming down the track. Um, what's its impact going to be on AMD APUs, especially the Ryzen uh, 5600G, 5700G? Are those going to be some kind of viable alternatives? And this is one of those things where uh, this is really trying to put a big Band-Aid over a gaping gunshot wound of there are no GPUs. I'm just going to caution folks right now. Yes, uh, the, the specifically the, the the 3200G, the 3400G, these are CPUs you'll probably be looking at if you would have normally have built a rig with like an RX 570 and it's super budget gaming rig. Those are fine. And those are fine as stopgap measures. And yes, you can overclock the, the memory in there quite a bit. Uh, you typically have to do it at the BIOS level. You don't get to use uh, AMD's Radeon software in order to do it. But I would say that if you're considering something like a 5600G or 5700G, I would wait. I don't understand why we push so hard to get those products to the DIY PC market. They make a lot of sense for OEM only. I think just like the 4000 series, they make a lot of sense for OEM only. I know people wanted them because they're just desperate for a solution right now. But in testing, and folks went out and got pre-built with these CPUs, I was actually just about to do the same thing. I'm, they saved me some money, uh, Gamers Nexus did, by going out and doing theirs first. And I'll include, uh, maybe I'll throw up some slides as we're talking here on some of the expected performance between like a 5600G and a 5600X. Um, let's start with the integrated graphics performance of them. They're terrible. They're trashed here. They're GT710, GT1030 levels of performance. And I think people who go out and they're expecting much better performance than that, they're gonna be very disappointed. If you're going out and buying a Ryzen 5600G, it's because you eventually wanna put at least a, 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 a nicer graphics card, a higher end graphics card in, right? Otherwise you'd be up, you'd get like an Intel 11400 or you'd get maybe a Ryzen uh, 1600 AF or one of the cheaper four core eight thread CPUs in there. You're not gonna buy a Ryzen 5600X to put eventually a, you know an RX 580 in that thing. So I think you're gonna be very disappointed with this lineup. I understand why AMD is giving it to DIY PC. It's one of these things where careful what you wish for, <laughs> you just might get it. And I'm concerned that a lot of folks are gonna rush out and buy these things thinking it's a solution uh, long-term. And then they're gonna find out when they finally do get a graphics card that they've lost you know, as much as 10% or more performance. And then in other workloads, productivity in particular, because it has less L3 cache, um, they're gonna find that it's, it's quite a bit behind uh, where, the, for instance, the 5600X, the non-APU, uh, falls. And I think there's going to be a lot of buyer's remorse there. So that's my concern is that, you know, it's a it's a Band-Aid on a gunshot wound right now. And yes, you can crank them up to get a little bit more performance. I strongly recommend people consider why you're buying this thing. If you're just buying it for a stopgap measure, I would recommend instead, you know, listen, RTX 3060 is right now on the secondary market are selling for about $800, they're only gonna come down to about $400, $450, right, is where the MSRP is really landing. Um, that's a $350 difference over, oh, what, like a five month period right now? So that's like, I don't know, I'm doing the math in my head, it's like 60, 70 bucks a month. You're basically paying to get awesome levels of performance, have it now, and not gimp your machine into the future. So just 
crunch some of these numbers in your head as you're thinking about these APUs. I don't see al almost any use case for these APUs other than an OEM machines. They make a lot of sense. They just don't make a lot of sense for the uh, the DIY PC market when you can event when you're eventually going to get another graphics card to replace it. Okay, Justin Gower asks, is the X570S version worth upgrading to from the original X570 or B550? Yeah, this one is confusing a lot of people still. So what happened is um, maybe a couple of months ago, a trademark filing was placed for a, a, a bunch of boards with the X570S chipset involved. And a lot of people think, oh, hey, th is there must be a new chipset coming down the line. Uh, what is this for? What are the features going to be? It turns out the S stands for silent. It, they're just removing the uh, the little chipset fans, those stupid little proprietary chipset fans that everybody hated when they launched because if that thing burns out, how do you, you can't replace it. Yeah, I mean, that's a pain in the butt. So they're just replacing the chipset fans. They may use this as an opportunity as they recently done with some of the B450 boards. They've released a version two of them to upgrade things like VRMs, to upgrade audio, things of that nature. And, and some of those X570 boards really need it because honestly, the low end, the, the budget X570s are trash, in my opinion. Trash tier VRMs, they got trash tier features. If you look at if you look at the time period when they came out, they came out at the same time that Ryzen 3000 launched. Ryzen was still, you know, are they gonna make it? Are they not gonna make it? Um, so you can see that level of kind of hesitancy and balance that the board partners put in terms of uh, investing in those boards. So Shorts NL asks, DDR5 is coming. When's it going to be worthwhile for consumers to buy? And is it worth waiting for to build a new PC? Let's answer the first part of that first. It's not going to be it's not going to be worth buying until you have a motherboard that you can plug it into. And right now we're still at least on the AM4 uh, socket and and the current generation for Intel, we're still on DDR4. The next generation platforms will more than likely certainly be DDR5. That's all the leaks, all the information we've received about. Uh, especially uh, Ryzen 6000 that's coming down, which will, should be five nanometer, um, is that it's gonna be DDR5. So that's when it's gonna be worth buying. Are the performance differences? Yeah, it's it's fa it's not just that it's faster memory. It's also, uh, there's a huge number of architectural uh, changes being made to it, probably increase the performance even, even more than just the speed, right? So we'll have to see what the performance difference looks like. But if it looks anything like DDR3 to DDR4, it'll definitely be worth buying and worth upgrading to. That being said, right now, if you're buying, building something, I wouldn't wait for it. If you're towards the end of the year, I might think about waiting for it. But by then, we'll have a clearer picture of when we expect Ryzen 6000 to launch. Uh, there'll be more leaks and things like that. So right now, it's not worth waiting for. Um, I think eventually the performance will be worth upgrading to, but we're not there yet. And of course, you're going to be buying into an early uh, adopter platform. So you'll have to deal with probably some of the bugs that come out of it initially that will have to get ironed out. And, you know, there's you'll have to pay uh, the price premium for it as well. I do expect to see the uh, the, the current generation platform begin to be get discounted, as long as we're out of the silicon shortage, obviously. QT P13 asks, uh, coming of ATX 12 VO not only brings energy efficiency, but much smaller PSUs. Do I think this can spur more interest in the small form factors such as ITX? How do I think it's gonna affect PSU production and pricing? Um, not just ATX, but SFX PSUs as well. For the folks who don't know what he's talking about, uh, we have forever used uh, the same standard 24 pin connector um, for PSUs. And this is going back a long time. And right now, there's a, a push to move to a standard called ATX12VO, which moves some of that power delivery from the PSU itself onto the motherboard. This is really good for power efficiency. It's good for a number of reasons. I'm just not convinced it's good enough uh, in terms of performance to really push all the way through, at least maybe not in the current environment when we're supply constrained on everything. Um, I don't necessarily expect a wide scale adoption of this probably for years. I might be wrong in that, but I, I really don't. Maybe 
with the upgrade to DDR5 and the next generation motherboards, we might see this. I just don't see board partners wanting to take on the liability in terms of things going wrong on their motherboards uh, that currently fall under the power supply companies right now. Why, why they want to scrape some of that over to their plate, um, I think you're going to need to see significant performance gains for it. Now on the small form factor side, you might see this. You might see this in ITX boards or like DTX boards, it's super small uh, motherboards. That's a pretty niche uh, field. I'm actually not the best resource for it either. If uh, Optimum Tech, if folks watch his channel, he's phenomenal in that space. I would strongly recommend whatever he has to say is gonna be much smarter than what I have to say on that accord. I just think in terms of uh, the ATX cases, micro ATX uh, cases, I would strongly suspect we're not gonna see uh, active adoption of it for years if at all, here's a question I get uh, more th often than I thought I would off my memory, uh, best memory for Ryzen 5000, and that is on uh, you know, Twix ass on a Ryzen 5600X, is 3600 uh, CL16 worth it compared to 3200 uh, CL16 or 14? And I just want to go through these again because maybe it just wasn't clear in the video. This all has to do with price or performance, basically. So I at the time, memory was much cheaper when I did that video back in December. All the principles in that video are the same, by the way, so I'll leave a link to it up in, up in the card if you wanna check it out. I go through uh, dual rank versus single rank. Uh, we go through the, the whole nine yards and basically come to what's the best memory for Ryzen, which is that frankly, for most gaming, it's 3200 CL16, uh, which is cheap memory right now. In fact, I just pulled up a kit of it if you want a four by eight, which will give you, which is a great kit, a Corsair kit, it's only $140 right now. And I believe that's actually through Corsair directly. I'll leave links to some of the stuff down in the description too, if you want to check it out. Meanwhile, if you're looking at something like 3200 CL14 memory, which I really don't think people should be buying, it's just stupid expensive. The cheapest kit I can find right now is over at Newegg. With 20 bucks off, it's $215. So that's a, big gap there and there's not a lot of performance difference. Instead, you could go with like a 32, uh, 3600 CL16 kit for something like $180, $190. That's gonna do much, much better for you. So just real quick on that, if you're just gaming and you're gaming with anything other than an RTX 3090 or 6900 XT on the AMD side at 1080p and trying to get super high refresh levels that go way beyond what most monitors will even display, then yes, there is a benefit to getting faster memory than 3200 CL16. I would go up to 3600 CL16. You can actually time it, 3800 CL16 or CLA18 seems to be the sweet spot. But frankly, uh, I wouldn't overdo it. And 3600 CL18 is fine. It also tends to be cheaper. 36, 3200 CL16 is absolutely fine. And I don't really see any benefit other than wasting a lot of money on something like 3200 CL14 memory. It's just, unless you're gonna manually tune it and, and jump in there, because it's been better, uh, you'll, you'll probably get better clocks out of it. I would just go with that. So that's gonna wrap it up for our June Q&A. Thank you so much for submitting questions. Remember, look out next month about the same time for a community post asking for more of your questions. And we'll do this again in July if it's if it, uh, successful. I did wanna mention, however, we have merchandise on the channel and I would love you, if you wanna support the channel, people are always asking me, what's the best way to support it? Number one, give the video a like. That is massively supportive. I can't even tell you, the algorithm loves that and that helps us get out to many more folks. The other thing you can do obviously is subscribe, but if you're already subscribed, if you already clicked the bell icon, hey, buy some merch. Thank you all once again for supporting the channel and I'll catch you on the next one.